everybody. This video is the first in a set of videos I am going to make. It's a bit like a video diary, I suppose, about my homeopathic journey. Now, I've had a number of health problems for quite a long time now. Some are long-standing, others more recent. I also suffer from anxiety, not fear-based, but just from traumas mainly that I've had uh, during my life. Experiences that have occurred to give me that anxiety and also anxiety associated with my ADHD. I have the hyperactive version of ADHD, whereas my hubby Dan has the more inattentive version. Really, what encouraged me, I suppose, was the events that have occurred in the health world, particularly over the last few years, that has brought even more into question what I'm doing, sticking with conventional medicine. Everywhere I look on social media, it seems that people when they go to see their doctor, if they can get an appointment at all, instead of the doctor looking for the root cause of their illness, just gives them medication. There doesn't seem to be any time spent properly these days getting to know the patient and looking at what might have happened in the lead up to that illness. They just use a one size fits all and just gives them a medication which may or may not work and may cause toxicity and other health problems and it may even aggravate health conditions. I want to share a story what happened, oh I'm going back now to probably 2012. I have plenty of free iron but I have small red blood cells so I have a lower than normal blood count but that's totally normal for me and that's linked to my thyroid disease but the doctor I had at the time didn't check my ferritin which was excellent as it turned out to be and gave me iron tablets and I suffered from poisoning and had to take myself to the A&E for liver function tests and a couple of weeks after that the doctor for whatever reason went bankrupt. I wasn't the only one who had been affected by misdiagnosis and the giving of medication that I didn't need and this seems to happen more and more and the health system as it is tends to spend most of its time these days trying to find any illness in healthy people just to give them a pharmaceutical and yet the waiting list of people who have genuine problems at the moment in the UK is 7.6 million so instead of getting them sorted a lot of um, medical professionals seem to spend more time trying to find something wrong with healthy people that may not be a problem at all and just give them something for example a statin that they don't need it can do more harm than good so unless you have a lot of real health problems i would say if i don't take these medications will it kill me will it injure me and if there's no definitive answer or you're still not happy with the answers just say no so that really was the first thing that made me more keen than ever to try and distance myself a little bit from conventional medicine. Another one was my mum, I suppose. She was on a huge cocktail of drugs. She had drugs for this, drugs for that, drugs for something else, a whole carrier bag every month. And I saw how medications made her and they gave her further problems. And she ended up addicted to opioids and among other things as well. And um, her end was deeply distressing. 
Now, I was also spurred on by Dan's visit to a local homeopath and simply homeopathy.co.uk, Lee, uh, Dan in Broadstairs, and he um, already seems to be making progress even after a few weeks. So that also made me determined, I suppose, to go and seek a little bit of advice. Now, I've been on um, thyroxine for 23 years. It's a long time, especially in the last seven years through diet and lifestyle changes, although I already had a healthy diet, but through further tweaks, my medication has come down from 125 micrograms every day to a split dose to um, 75 micrograms four times a week and 50 micrograms three times a week. And I'm due for my review again soon. I have one review a year. I'm not sure whether that will change this time or whether I'll stay on the same dose. I have continued my healthy diet and lifestyle and this is especially important as I was also formally diagnosed with fibromyalgia in 2015 uh, following a few very painful years. And I've had chronic fatigue syndrome actually since my diagnosis for a pituitary adenoma, which was benign. I was treated for nine years and I had awful side effects. I have a lot of allergies to medicines, food additives and all manner of things. And I had a number of severe allergic reactions and it also messed with my blood sugar as well. I don't know whether the illness itself or the drugs were worse. It was just a dark time. So when I had my consultation last week, we talked about the events in my personal life leading up to the presentation of symptoms and the diagnosis of the two conditions, the pituitary adenoma and also the underactive thyroid. And like my mum, I'm not overweight. A lot of people who have an underactive thyroid are overweight, but I'm not. However, I did bloat up when I was on the steroids for the prolactinoma. I was allergic to bromocryptine, so they put me on cabagolin, which is the same medication as they give Parkinson's patients. It, I was extremely unwell um, for nine years. The only other option was to go under the knife, and I didn't particularly want that. It's quite often with such an operation, the pituitary gland can become damaged as a result of the delicate surgery. And then the recovering patient needs even more drugs than they were on before. And being somebody who is hypersensitive to, as I said, drugs, toxins, additives, that wasn't really an option for me. It's very important actually to discuss the personal events and traumas that go on in somebody's life leading up to any presentation and diagnosis because of course the mind can affect so much. From my mum's own position she had poor mental health and when she was going through the ringer her health also took a beating. Then when she was feeling better in her mind, her health seemed to be a lot better. And I always noticed that about her. And I've noticed that in other people. So I do think there is a big part of 
be in mind as well that needs to be taken into consideration it's an all over experience if you think about our meridian centers everything is linked the mind and the body and the spirit now of course in some religions uh, there's the idea of uh, illness being psychosomatic however you know if one breaks a leg is that mind over matter hmm now there's a thought however i do believe our thinking can manifest outcomes as well so if we go about our life in a negative way it can bring about illness and calamity and bad luck whereas if we stay positive and upbeat i believe that we can defend things off to a certain degree now my consultation lasted three hours and it is quite normal for a homeopathic consultation to last between one and two hours mine lasted longer we had a lot of stuff to go through and one of the things that lee observed was she said oh you've had a lot of bereavement in your life haven't you and i took that on board but i've dealt with that it's just a fact of life i'm not afraid of death i've seen it i've been in cases myself of anaphylaxis where my life has just been in the hands of fate because i'm allergic to epi as well and i've just had to let it ride itself out and there was a time in february 2021 where i had a episode of anaphylaxis following a dessert that dan made me and it had additives in that i didn't know about and I felt the life force start to move out of my body, but I wasn't afraid. I just thought what will be done will be done. And I managed to survive, but I was ill afterwards for several days. But of course, the soul is separate from the body. The soul lives on. The body is the vehicle by which the soul carries out its purpose on the earth plane. We all have our different beliefs and that's fine as well. Lee also asked me if I was comfortable with talking about the circumstances surrounding my mother's death. So we discussed that and a number of other things, including episodes of PTSD that I've had, how it, how it comes out, how it presents itself about nightmares as well and panic attacks and all related to trauma and I was very ill following my mother's death and burial and my lungs were quite badly affected this was in March of 2020 and I got over that through natural remedies and then of course I, I, I came down with hay fever which I've suffered from all my life so I've still got this cough and problems from this respiratory illness that I had and then that was compounded by congested hay fever which is hay fever with asthmatic presentation so I could get flashbacks of my mother in a coffin and I had all these awful dreams and this went on for quite a long time, but I gradually got over that. And then I had another episode of PTSD several years before that, when my mum had suffered type 2 respiratory failure. And I was driving up to Derby to see her, and I suddenly felt a wave of panic come over while I was driving. And I had to go to the next service station, pull over for a while and have a cup of tea and just sort of sit there for a while and I've had many other instances throughout my life as well where I've had PTSD symptoms as well and bad dreams I am prone to anxiety and it's usually to do with some kind of experience that I've had that brings it on 
being an empath, I'm a very sensitive person. So after all that, uh, I um, came away and then on the Friday, so I only had to wait two or three days, I got my remedy. So I've been given carcinosin in 200 C, 30 C and 1 M. And these tablets were included in the £55 consultation fee and they last a month. So tonight I take the first one, which is the 30C, which I take this evening. And 15 minutes before and 15 minutes after, I need to avoid coffee, menthol, because the menthol can have a negative effect on the remedy. In future, I need to limit any coffee intake, not that I drink much anyway, I don't, to uh, a maximum of one or two cups a day, but I'm going to avoid coffee as much as possible. I can drink uh, green tea, say black tea, a uh, Diet Coke, which I don't drink anyway, and other drinks as well, but I won't be drinking peppermint tea. Or if I do, it would only be the occasional cup because that can also interfere with the remedy. Some of you may be wondering what homeopathy is. It's a natural form of complementary medicine which encourages the body to heal itself. It's been practiced for well over 200 years. It was conceived in 1796 by the German physician Samuel Hahnemann. It can be used to treat a wide range of health conditions and it's the second largest system of medicine in the world today. And it's been recognised as such by the World Health Organisation. Now then, while I don't exactly concur with everything the WHO are doing, and I'll mention the treaty, and that's all I'm saying, and the intentions of leaders within that organisation, I would question whether they had our best interests at heart. We all have light and shade. So where there is darkness, there is also light as well. So in other words, not everything that is espoused by the who is necessarily a bad thing. And in this case, it's very good. I think we need to always be receptive to other forms of healing. I have witnessed a huge amount of improvement in people receiving different therapies and different forms of consultation, whether they be CBT, homeopathy or group therapy, art therapy or anything else. So I have a very open mind regarding these things and I think we all need to open our minds and go with the flow and be receptive to diff trying different things and going with what is right for us. Those instincts that in thousands of years gone by people used to live their daily lives, hunt, provide for the family, keep themselves warm, keep themselves alive. Long, long, long before any idea of conventional medicine came into play. Of course, I've made lots of notes 
about homeopathy so I'm looking at stuff as well from my cue sheet so I don't forget everything homeopathy can be used to treat people at all stages of life animals and even plants it can be used for minor ailments such as cuts and bruises coughs and colds and also long-term problems especially those which have failed to respond to conventional medicine such as arthritis asthma migraine, chronic fatigue syndrome, and of course, the CFS-based conditions such as fibromyalgia and ME. Also depression, anxiety, eczema, and irritable bowel syndrome. It's based on the principle of like cures like. So in other words, a substance taken in small amounts will cure the same symptoms it causes if taken in large amounts. Homeopathy treats each person as an individual, a unique being, with the aim of stimulating their own natural healing ability. I too believe that the body has an ability to heal itself. I've always believed that. And indeed, it can be used alongside conventional medicine as well. So me, for example, I'm on thyroxine, so I need to be still taking my thyroxine along with the homeopathic remedy that Lee has prescribed me because it would be potentially dangerous if I didn't do so. Although one day I'm hopeful that I won't need to take thyroxine anymore, but it's something that takes time. You can't expect to see instant results. Some remedies can take at least a year to show results. So why would I think that homeopathy would be any different, especially when you've got a long-term condition such as mine? You can't expect things to happen overnight. It's taken me seven years to halve my dose and it's 23 years since I started taking thyroxine which was then only a small amount and I had a number of complications with the thyroid at one point eight years ago I had no stability with it at all. I was fluctuating a lot so we had to get to the bottom of that but I had a lot of blood work done and I didn't have any ferritin or vitamin D or any B or any other deficiencies none whatsoever nor did I have thalassemia because I've got some European ancestry so I even got tested for thalassemia the conclusion was reached that I had small red blood cells as a result of the thyroid disease but the pain I was experiencing wasn't to do with the thyroid it was actually CFS fibromyalgia type. So based on the principle that the body can heal itself and as individuals, we are all unique. Homeopaths work through not just your physical problems or mental health problems, but also they're interested in how your symptoms affect you because we're all different. Therefore, symptoms can present themselves in unique ways. Admittedly, as individuals, we might share some symptoms, but there's always differences as well. Things like lifestyle and medical history, and that can go back to, say, grandparents as well, and cousins, and aunts, uncles, not just you and your parents it goes further back than that as it would if you were signing on at a new gp practice and you're often asked about what illnesses and diseases your grandparents had as well it doesn't just stop at yourself and your parents it's the same thing in homeopathy 
and also your state of mind plays a part in the consultation as well and the homeopath then when you've gone will look further and digest what has been discussed in the consultation and also what you've put on your personal medical form then when you've gone will look further and digest what has been discussed in the consultation and also what you've put on your personal medical form and will then put together the most appropriate homeopathic medicine for you now as i said i have been given something called carcinosin it's a gentle form of homeopathic remedy it's used to treat various cancers and especially breast and liver cancers but is also used for non-cancerous conditions in those with a strong family history of cancer which I don't have but also things like emotional stress and anxiety, chronic fatigue syndrome, uh, skin problems, abdominal pain, respiratory illness. I've had a lot of respiratory illness during my life. Insomnia, which is one of the things I suffer from, as well as many other uses. But they're the main ones that it's used for and also um, presentation as well of ADHD symptoms, which some of these fall within ADHD, particularly the stress and anxiety. So a lot of different studies have been undertaken. Current research also supports the anti-cancer effects of carcinosin as a complementary and alternative medicine. A study published in the Journal of Alternative and Complementary Medicine in 2005 found that carcinosin 200 was effective again PDAB induced liver cancer in mice. And another study published in the Indian Journal of Biochemistry and Biophysics in 2009 found that carcinosin has a benefit against liver toxicity oxidative stress, genotoxicity and cytotoxicity induced from carcinogens during liver cancer in mice induced with PDAB and phenobarbital. Now, of course, when you've been on medication for a long time, it can also have an effect on a liver. So even if you've got really good liver function, you know, there's a certain amount of detoxification as well that needs to take place. In Homeopathy, the remedy profile is significant to help determine whether carcinosin is the right remedy for the individual. The homeopathic profile of carcinosin describes the remedy being best suited for shy and oversympathetic people that are often, hyper often hypersensitive during childhood as such children will often suppress their emotions and are easily offended and dislike being scolded or criticised. Well, that was me to a T, to be perfectly honest. But I was always quite precocious. I had to be, I had to live on my wits because I had quite a, a traumatic, um, unhappy childhood. So I wasn't the average eight year old or 12 year old or 15 year old at all. And people with ADHD as well tend to be quite emotional people. That is one of, especially in, in women, this is how it can present itself in, in women with ADHD, quite emotional people. The person who is right for this remedy also likes excitement and travel, a yearning for deep fulfilment may lead, lead to illness and exhaustion. I hate being in one place for too long. I absolutely loathe it. 
I'm a traveller by nature. Uh, if I'm in one place too long, I feel incarcerated and it doesn't do me any good at all. I usually go for a daily walk or do something to keep myself entertained. I work mainly from home, so I need to be out and about just to help my mental health and to help to keep my vibrations high. So it can be used for a lot of other things, headaches, muscles twitching, eyelids, tender gums, anything like that. It can also be used for the treatment of tuberculosis and diabetes and also sometimes for the treatment of the actual diseases. I will probably talk more about the uses of carcinosin as I continue the journey. I'm looking forward to starting my remedy this evening. I will say something about the chronic fatigue syndrome though and I can certainly concur with a lot of the symptoms. It's a condition that is severe fatigue and lasts more than six months. It's the result of a combination of factors including immune system imbalance, parasites, chronic fungal infections, dysbiosis, chemical sensitivities, food allergies, poor adrenal function, hypothyroidism, high stress, sleep disorders and hypoglycemia. It's used for CFS when exhaustion and weakness have a link with tender muscles. Other traits include frequent colds, which is something I don't suffer from, nausea, which is, recurrent acute illnesses, not so much, dizziness, yes, I have suffered for many years with vertigo, off and on, and numbness, which is something else I suffer from. There may also be issues with concentration and depression, Carcinosin is also needed after CFS develops after a bout of mononucleosis. Now, mononucleosis is commonly known as glandular fever. It's a viral infection caused by the Epstein-Barr virus, EPV, and presents with fever, sore throat, fatigue and swollen lymph nodes. I've had that as well. It's often spread through saliva and can be treated with rest and fluids. So there's most of those symptoms I have. Of course, the hypothyroidism I have as well. And this is why I have been given carcinosin. I need to improve my immune system. Although I generally do have a reasonably good immune system and don't come down with colds frequently, I haven't had a chest infection for 18 months or a cold. I do know that around people, a lot of people, I am susceptible. I remember when I was in Rock Choir a few years ago and there was over 100 of us, I was down with something very frequently every two or three weeks I was going down with something so this is absolutely the right thing for Lee to have prescribed me. Now unfortunately in England and Wales homeopathy is no longer available on the NHS although it is in Scotland and if you go to the NHS website there is a little bit of misinformation they say that homeopathy only acts as a placebo, that there's little evidence of it working. And they say as well that homeopaths are not regulated and that anybody can do it, as if homeopaths are quacks. Now, this is completely incorrect. If you go to homeopathy.co.uk, that website, it will tell you that 
doctors and other healthcare professionals who practice homeopathy are regulated by their relevant professional body. The Faculty of Homeopathy represents medically qualified homeopaths, while Society of Homeopaths and Alliance of Registered Homeopaths both represent professional homeopaths. The charitable links are all run by homeopaths registered with one of these three organisations. And the website also has a find a homeopath search to find registered homeopaths who are located near you. So to say that they are not regulated is a piece of misinformation on the NHS website to discredit alternative forms of medicine which, to be honest, doesn't sit well with me at all. Plus, whatever you say about the WHO, they say it's, it's the second largest system of medicine in the world today. It doesn't say whether or not they approve of that, but that's what they say. And I don't know whether some of you know, but the British Royal Family and... Also, some of the royal family in Europe have used homeopathy for many decades. The, one of the most eminent homeopaths was a gentleman called Sir John Weir. And he was a personal physician of the British royal family for a number of the monarchs, including King George V, Edward VIII, George VI, and actually helped him in his cancer battle as well, and probably helped to prolong his life through homeopathy, and also Queen Elizabeth II. And I believe that the royal family, even today, still use homeopathic remedies alongside any conventional medicine and to be honest if it's good enough for them that's good enough for me you don't have to be a fan of the British royal family you don't have to be a fan of the World Health Organization all I'm saying is that if other institutions are open to the idea of homeopathy, then so may we. And I'll speak to you again soon. Bye.